Hello, this is William from Visual Components, and I'm going to show you how to use gravity direction when teaching a robot to place a part. Gravity direction is a tolerance value that is used by a robot to logically determine where it can release a part in the 3D world. For example, onto a conveyor, onto a pallet, or inside a box. To see how this works, you can select any robot in the 3D world, go to the Component Properties panel, and then expand Actions Configuration, this section down here. By default, a robot uses its outputs to perform actions. Outputs 1 through 16 are predefined to do grasp and release actions. So you're picking something up and then you're putting something down or grabbing it and letting go. When the value is true, you're grasping. That uses a detection volume size and a tool frame. So it's doing a volume detection to find a part that the robot can pick up if it's within this detection volume space or box. When you're releasing, you're actually letting go of a part that is contained in the robot or attached to it. And when you're doing that, you're using gravity direction. Remember, the force of gravity is a force that pulls down, so we're using the negative z-axis direction in the world coordinate system. So this floating origin up here, this is the world coordinate system. And the arrow is pointing up, but for gravity direction, we're pulling down. But how far are we pulling down? Well, it's based on this value here. Right now in this robot it's set to 25 millimeters. So when the robot has the part, it's going to pull the part down based on this value and see if the part collides with anything in the 3D world. If it does, the robot will then release the part to that detected component. To see how that works, I have a layout in, in the 3D world which you can find a link to in the video description. So go ahead and open that layout and then we'll go to the program tab. You can see the robot has a very simple program. It's going to pick a part and place it on a pallet. So let's run it now. Here comes the part and the pallet, or the sheet here. And we can see, whoa, whoa, what happened there? So the robot did let go of the part, but notice it did not release it onto the sheet. It released it to the conveyor. So why do you think that happened? Well, to troubleshoot, which might be a reason why you're watching this video, let's go to where the robot is placing a part in the subroutine. So we're going to go to position 6 to approach the conveyor. Go to the next position to place the part. And after that, notice that we're using an output of 1 to, with a false value, which, so we're signaling a release of the part. So before we do that, let's add a halt statement here. Reset our simulation and run again. The halt statement is very helpful for testing your robot program, because then the simulation will automatically stop when it executes that statement, which it does here. So if we remember, when we're using gravity direction in this robot right now with the output of 1, we're going to move the part that's contained down 25 millimeters in the direction of gravity, so we're pulling down. So if I go to the jog panel, let's use our world coordinate system and subtract 25 from the z-axis coordinate. And if we select our cylinder, you can see that it is colliding now with both the sheet and the conveyor. So since the bottom of the part is touching the conveyor, that's what the robot is going to release it to. And that's why when you continue to run the simulation, you can see that both the part and the sheet are moving separately on the conveyor. But we want them to move together. You can also verify what this cylinder is attached to by going to the Home tab using the PMP command and you can see the cylinder, its parent or it's attached to the conveyor, not this sheet here, the pallet. And notice the pallet is attached to the conveyor, but if it has any child components, things that are attached to it, they will move with it. So that's what we want to do. So to fix this, let's select our robot, go back to the component properties panel, and for our output one signal action, instead of using a gravity direction of 25, which we saw was too much, Let's use one and see what happens. So now we're only going to move the part down one millimeter and see if it collides with something. And that should be enough since we're placing this cylinder on the surface of the sheet. And run the simulation and sure enough it is. So now if we select our cylinder you can see it's attached to the sheet not the conveyor. So we know that a gravity direction of at least one is enough to detect the pallet and release the part to it. Let's now try a different value. 
for gravity direction. So select the robot, go back to output one, signal action. And I already know that the, the sheet I'm using, its thickness is 10. So if you select this feeder here and go to the product params tab, you can notice that its height is 10. So a value of 10 will work. But let's get crazy and use a gravity direction of 11. So this might be too much. We might detect a conveyor instead and release the part to it. So let's run our simulation. And so far so good, but what if we continue to run the simulation, we can see, haha, oh, we're back to where we were before. So if we select the cylinder, yep, it's attached to the conveyor, not the sheet. So it seems a range of maybe one to 10 is enough to detect the pallet and release the part to it. So let's go back to that signal action of one, use a gravity direction of 10, run the simulation. And so far so good, continue to run, and yep, there we go. So a value between one and 10 is okay for this test case here. In your own solutions, you might have to adjust the gravity direction a bit more or less, depending on how you're releasing the part. Because sometimes you might have parts stacked on top of each other and you actually want them to be attached to the bottom layer, not some middle layer. So sometimes you have to manipulate the gravity direction a bit to get what you want. And sometimes this also does require using different output signals. So you might use output one to place one part, but use a different output to place another part because you can have different gravity directions for different output signals or grasp and release actions. Okay. This concludes the video. If you have any more questions about this subject, please feel free to ask questions on our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.